Hola tribe, welcome to the house of Kai. So today we're doing our medicine oracle read. And uh, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I love comments. So please feel free to respond if something resonates with you. Um, let me know if the words I'm offering have any any resonance or depth to your world. Um, it also helps me make sure that I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm hearing things appropriately from the cards. So I often, I often get messages and the messages are not just for me, they're more for the collective, you know? What is it that those within our tribe are dealing with or focusing on as we move forward on this, this new earth that we're on. And so instead of just speaking and, and um, telling you what I'm hearing and feeling and experiences that I've had that I know other people are having, so it's like this collective tribal vibe of what we're going through, I, you know, it's like picture time, storybook. Um, so the oracle cards really are just so we have something to play off of and have imagery with that in confirms, it confirms what we're experiencing together. And it's always kind of nice to have that level of confirmation. I like that a lot. So let's see, tribe, let's see. Um, you know, I was just thinking I should tell you what decks I use, but I don't even remember right now and I do apologize. I'll have to make sure. If you ever have questions on the decks I use, um, they're quite amazing intricate, beautiful imagery. Uh, and so if you ever want to know what those are, please let me know. And uh, yeah, I have other decks that I'll probably use in the future, but these are the ones that are calling to me right now. These are the ones. So. Hmm. What is it the tribe requires knowing at this time as we step forth on the new earth. Yeah, big shifts and changes, multitudes of crossroads have been presented. And um, you know, it's interesting, it's very, very interesting. I, I, like many, will say there are no mistakes, right? There are, there are moments of could have done better, better decisions, but there's really no mistakes because everything is meant to be learned from as long as we learn from it, right? As long as we learn from it. And, you know, I'm gonna say this is, when I read for people, when I communicate in, in my sessions, uh, when I do my advisory, I don't often tell people things from a very black and white perspective. I don't necessarily believe in good or bad. Um, not, there's not everything that's evil or positive, you know, it just doesn't work that way. And if that is your perception, then that is your perception, yet the reality to which I live doesn't, doesn't vibe, right? So I say that um, because when I speak of the information coming in. It's not good or bad. It's stories. It's data. It's code, right? It's information that may or may not resonate with you, and it's information that will you'll pick up as you go if it's meant to be, right? So if this if the information is meant to resonate with you, it's going to resonate with you. And, you know, maybe the whole message doesn't, just pieces of it. So know that too. All right, tonight is number 37, Diamond Tiger of the Black Moon. Ooh, so yummy, Diamond Tiger of the Black Moon. Second chances bring success. Wow, that's fierce. That's fierce. So, 
we've had many paths, many, many paths being brought to our attention. And I do believe, I do believe that, as I was saying, there's no mistakes. And I often think that people, they think they've made choices down a path and they think they can't stop where they are, that they aren't allowed to say, oh, wait a second, I'm gonna reconfigure the data instead of just moving forward. You know, I had a, a, an interesting conversation with somebody just recently, um, and they were telling me that right before they had gotten married, they knew, they knew that it wasn't supposed to be. All these red flags came up right beforehand, and instead of canceling the wedding, they created in their mind and in their heart that they had to go forward with it because everyone, you know, their family was invested and everyone you know, was saying how it was supposed to happen. So instead of listening to their own inner knowing and their own inner guidance, when the message was clear, so it was like, okay, they're moving forward, they're planning the wedding, they're doing all these things, and then as they got closer, um, little things like, the one thing she had always wanted was to be a mom. And like, I think it was like weeks, months before the wedding, they were like, oh yeah, I don't ever plan on having kids. Maybe I told you I was going to, but I've decided not. So even though there was like this momentum, instead of being like, whoop, like not going that direction, like, ooh, that doesn't resonate for me, that doesn't align for me. Um, they went forward anyway. And she learned and grew from that experience. It's not as if she didn't and her life is wonderful. Um, you know, completely different path. However, we are always capable of stopping exactly where we are and saying, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't like that decision. Or I'm sitting with my current decision and seeing what that is, why? Why did I make that decision? What was, what information or data was needing to be collected? What understandings were needing to be understood so that I could make better decisions in the future? Because it wasn't that you made a mistake, you just had something to learn. So once you've learned it, you can now change directions or continue forward. Yet making each step based off of what's in resonance with you, right? So, so often I have made decisions based off of the betterment of other people. I know we're all guilty of it, right? Um, and I would, it's not a gender thing, but especially women, moms, right? Mamas have to make decisions based off of other people all the time. You know, making a decision based off of it's as if they don't even exist half the time, really. You know, once, I mean, it, more women are getting much more healthy in being a mom, which is beautiful. But it is so common for a mother to literally lose herself. She is no longer even a person, right? She lives and breathes for her children. She is just like a marker of energy that does all these things in order to support the rest of them. Very common, very, very common. And so <laughs> I'm hearing, don't do that. Don't do that, right? What is the importance of that, right? Realizing that you are the center of your universe. And if you don't stay on your center, if you don't honor from within, then one, no one else is gonna honor you properly. No one else is gonna know how to honor you properly because you're not giving them a, like a meter or a measurement to, to do that by, right? Because you don't even identify with it. So you're not having an internal meter of worthiness in order for the other person to even show up from, right? So that's one. The other is, oh, totally lost that. Oh. When you do that, you, it's like you're not even there. That which you're creating has no integrity to it, right? It's assumed. You are assuming 
that what you're creating, because in, in your mind you're like, oh, if I do it like this or if I do it like that, it's gonna benefit all these other people. Well, how do you know that? How do you know that? We don't. We don't know what is best for anyone else. We know what's best for ourselves. That's it, and so when we honor that which is best for ourselves, we can create from there, right? We can create from there. And so, I love this. Knowing that we have opportunity, right? Second chances bring success. We have opportunity to recreate again and again and again. Oh, and I love, look at the third eye in that guy. Oh, I wanna growl right back at him. Look at that tiger. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And that light is just literally beaming off of him. I can feel and see and hear it. It's just beaming, beaming, beaming. It's unbelievable. So I say this and I'm gonna, I believe we're coming into a full moon. I believe it's a full moon in Virgo in the next couple of days. It would be important to look at that. You know, even if you resonate or don't resonate with moon work, you know, I love, so. there's so many things people can put connotations on, it just is. You'll never please everyone. Everyone is going to have some sort of program, right? I've had many of my own, um, and I've worked with many, you know, I'll just say, like, I've had a lot of, like, um, Baptists or Christians or... You know, different religious beings that when I speak of moon work or honoring of the moon, they freeze up, they shut down, they can't comprehend because now we're talking witchery, right? Well, I mean, plain and simple, you eat vegetables, right? For the majority, most people eat veggies. So farmers base all of their gardening off of the cycles of the moon. So you can call it witchery, I call it harvest, right? I call it learning how to utilize the energy that God gave us. It's like a pulse that the creator said, hey, guess what? I'm gonna offer you a map to what best serves your um, ecosystem and your, you know, how to, how to sustain sustainability. So if there's a fear around following the moon or honoring the moon, then you might wanna look at that. You might wanna look at that because that fear is now wrapped up and, you know, like just basic food, right? I, I, I know there's a better word for saying and I apologize, my brain's not taking in that word at this moment, but, you know, farmer's almanac, look at, it's, if you have resistance to honoring the moon, then you have resistance to the food you eat. Kind of odd, but true. So in the next full moon, I'm gonna strongly recommend that you sit with that which you wish to create. And I believe I heard something about the Virgo moon has something to do with, um, it's a good time to really sit with your health and how you wanna move things forward and maybe change that. Um, so that's interesting. That's interesting. So, whew, let's see, let's see, let's see. As we shuffle and move through these moon phases. Oh, that tiger is just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Let's see. And we'll shuffle. Clarity. <sighs> Isn't that amazing? You know, sometimes we have to take steps in directions that we're not gonna go. Sometimes we need to take, sometimes we need to open doors and see what's behind them. Sometimes we need to take steps in directions we're not gonna actually go and take. Sometimes we need to feel that experience. Now, there's a really great way of doing that, that I practice this and I do this with my clients. Um, it's really nice to sit in a level of like meditation, do a little breath work, get very centered, and then 
talk someone down a path, and usually I offer them three doors. So I, I talk about where we're walking down a road and there's three doors. And so you have door one, door two, door three. And I describe, I wait until we get to the doors before I describe it, but we get in front of the doors and I say, okay, door one is A, B, and C. You know, if you walk through this door, it's gonna create this scenario. And if you walk through this door, you know, door number two, in the potential of this scenario, which may be a hybrid. It might be, you know, there's really only two potential decisions that the person's looking to make, but you can make a hybrid decision, you know, of like create something outlandish or um, just something not thought of, another option. So it's great to have those three doorways. And what I find is even before you open the door, even before you go and open that door, you can feel the vibration. It's like, you know, like, oh, I don't, you can feel like this open hearted, oh my goodness, this is amazing. This feels freedom to me, or it feels like I'm taking steps in the direction closer to my ultimate goal or my current ultimate goal, right? So it can feel that way, or it can feel nauseating or like imprisonment or bound up. Right? And so sometimes the doorway is not the epitome of all things. It's not the ultimate um, goal that you're looking to achieve. Yet it brings you closer to the vibration of that which you're looking to achieve. Right? So sometimes doorways are just in between doorways getting you to the next destination. Other times the doorway is the big doorway. And it's, you know, what's going to bring you the, the harvest you're looking for. Right? So, I love this. Having clarity of it. And really, this image always gets me. She's like, kind of hiding behind something. Right? She's just peering. She's looking. She's seeking. She's not committing to anything. Just interested. Just looking around. <laughs> Collecting data. Collecting data. And when we are centered, when we are coming from a place of that which honors ourselves, right? We are capable of collecting this data and making healthy decisions rather than pretending, right? How often have we gone, oh, well, mm, you know, just because that person talks bad about other people when I'm in their presence doesn't mean, I mean, they, they talk good about me when I'm with them. They say they like me, right? Any person I've ever had as a friend in my life that has talked crudely or rude about another human being, and I don't care what that human being is in relationship to them. I mean, it could just be the waiter at the restaurant they speak rudely or judge that person based off of a moment, right? I mean, it's one thing to have a, like, to be in a weird space and just be like, F them, you know what I mean? And then be like, oh, shit, I didn't mean that. You know, I'm just, I'm in a bad place. You know, it happens. We all have moments. <laughs> you know, I think that we all need to look at that in a gracious way of like, hey, we all have our moments. If you find you yourself or a person in your environment just talks rudely about another human being on a level that is like, wow, that's, what the fuck? How, how, how dare this person speak of another person like that? Who, who are they to believe that they have the right? I can guarantee they talk about you the same way. They do not hold back of levels of insult towards anyone. Just because you're not in their presence doesn't mean it's not, you know, it's especially when you're not in their presence, it's being said. So my personal experience, any human being that I've ever deemed a friend that has shown up like that, that they know best, they're better at everything, they, when they have that level of um, character, they use it everywhere. And so just because it doesn't, you don't, believe they would talk that way about you 
I could pretty much guarantee that they do. Yeah, that has been my personal experience. So allow that level of data and information to bring clarity to your life. So don't fool yourself. If you're going to experience something, then truly take the data in and don't lie to yourself afterwards. Be conscious, own what you know, and stand your ground so that you make decisions appropriately. Um, it is so easy for us to pacify bad behavior. Um, I have a dear friend that we've been <laughs> working through uh, their pacifying of bad behavior of a partner or an ex-partner of theirs, um, knowing that this person, oh, you know, they're just so wounded. It's their wounded child. I, I know they're just in pain. Da, da, da. No shit. No shit they are. Of course they are. But they have no right to speak to you that way. They have no right to insult you that way. They have no right to name call you or place their hands on you. It doesn't matter if they're wounded. We're all wounded. Every last one of us is wounded. And to look at another human being as if they're not wounded is a lie. It does not make rude or crude behavior acceptable. It doesn't. And like I said, don't get me wrong, we all have moments. We all fall from grace a little bit. <laughs> I call that a learning curve. Right? We all have days where, you know, I have my days where I'm driving and everybody on that road's an asshole. Everybody but me, right? Everybody but me is the asshole that day. I have those days. More often than not, I'm much better and realize that I'm the asshole. <laughs> and that I should pace myself and calm myself and breathe and sing to the music and maybe I should have left the house earlier or whatever BS I need to be accountable for. But realizing that we all are, right? We all are. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's, let's look here, let's look here. Look at my good decisions ahead of us, guys. Look at my, just stay clear. Stay clear on the path. Good. Something definitely happening with this full moon coming up. Yeah. Maybe write some thoughts down, have a fire. Um, honor the energies. Not a card yet, hold on, it's happening, it's happening. Hmm. <laughs> Positive outlook. Stay focused on the end goal. Stay in the positiveness. So oftentimes when we come to places of clarity, it can be upsetting, right? So as I said, um, let's go with the example of friendships and, you know, getting clear, realizing that like, shoot, they, that person wasn't the person I thought they were. It's upsetting. And we can overly focus on the negative aspects, right? We can overly focus on their bad behavior or how upset we are with ourselves for not having... Um, seen it earlier or, or whatever that may be. So it is easy, it is really, really easy for us to get caught up in um, what we don't want. So take it, store it as data, right? Mm, okay, good to know, good to know. I, you know, I see where I trusted or I see where I, you know, um, allowed them to be a friend more, you know, faster than they should have been whatever it is, but take that data in, make a note, file it, and just keep moving forward. Don't focus on the, the things that took place. Be proud of yourself for having recognized it as soon as you did, you know? The sooner we recognize it on the journey, the faster we can move forward. Um, I am 
so guilty of that person of holding on to the emotional stuff longer than needed. So, yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to. It's a learning experience for a reason. Take the data, move forward. Um, we don't have to punish ourselves, right? And we don't have to walk a path that doesn't serve us. Again, getting data, getting information. What is it I needed to learn? You know, what aspects of this person did I need to see? Um, yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah, I'm not having to walk down a path that is unserving. Why am I gonna walk down a path that's unserving to me? Or detrimental to um, my achievements and goals? <sighs> wow. Wow, and so I'm very much getting, there's a second card, but reverence. I feel like I wanna read from the book on that one, which I don't think I've ever read from the book with these cards, with this anyway. Yet really I'm just seeing this we're breaking free of old mindsets, old perceptions. We are growing beyond what we once knew, right? And so as we start to move forward, we can make different decisions. Just because it might seem similar or it might have roots in something that we had once you know, been involved in, it doesn't mean that we have to follow the same patterns, right? We, Toss that shit out the window. Make it up as you go along, right? But this truly, it's like you're breaking free. We together are breaking free and celebrating a whole new day. There's a whole new day unfolding in front of us. And so sitting in that, and I, again, I'm gonna grab that book. Hold on one second. Let's see. Let's see, reverence. Here we go. Honoring the goddess. In calling on the goddess, God came too. They're one and the same, I found to be true. I am one within the one. I thread in the web bringing light from above, creating with intention and my love. In the painting, honoring the goddess, the central god figure bows respectively, respectfully in his prayer. The female goddess is assisting his third eye connection to open. In union, their powers join and support each other, each in their own honoring way, praying for the earth and humanity. They represent the balance of the masculine and feminine necessary to remember how to create the paradise we seek. In truth, they are one. Om Mani Padme Hum. It's written in Sanskrit in the cosmic sky as a Tibetan mantra used to inspire and awake the divine jewel from within your heart. Om Mani Padme Hum. Reverence is an attitude of honoring life. You bless that which you do with gratitude and respect. Your actions affect all of mankind. In the web of life, you are a strand interconnected with everyone else, doing your part to weave our tapestry together. As you appreciate the beauty in a, in a moment, in children, in nature, or anything, your appreciation of the beauty radiates like the sun, blessing all of creation. One person, one person who dedicates themselves to seeing the sacredness of all of life, thereby reverence all of life, walks through their day, lifting the consciousness of many, many people by simply being. I know I've said that so many times. It's your existence that changes everything. 
You don't have to do anything. You just have to be you and emanate you. So I love that. One person who dedicates themselves to seeing the sacredness of all of life, thereby reverence, reveres all of life, walks through their day lifting the consciousness of many, many people simply by being. As you become reverent, your tendency to harm anything, including you, diminishes. Your consciousness raises and peace reigns supreme. Every single moment of your life contributes this way towards the light or it pulls it away. Your decision to become more reverent is your decision to become more spiritual. Opening more to the beauty of you, this is natural aspect of the authentic power. In choosing the medicine card reverence, it is time to sit with what is, see and appreciate God in all that is you. Are you honoring your heart? Do you need to forgive someone? Perhaps yourself. So that was really, really good. What a great read, you guys. So decisions are being made, right? Coming from places of center, we're getting clearer to make these decisions, stay positive and allow just its data. The information that is coming into us right now, just simply, yep, interesting. Isn't that interesting? Okay, put that over here. That's information that I need to know over here. This is information I need to know over here. And just stay in that positive outlook. Keep focused on your destination. And that destination is a reflection. It is a matching vibration to who you are centrally, who you are in the center of you, not who everybody else thinks you need to be. Fuck them. Just saying. In the most loving way possible. No one else is supposed to live inside of your body. Don't let them. Thank you, no thank you. Thank you, no thank you. I don't require that information to make my decision, but I appreciate that you thought I did. Thank you. Have a good day. Right? You don't owe them anything. You don't. You owe you. I can guarantee that. You owe you. All right, tribe. Have an awesome day. I love you. Peace out. Mwah!